What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's design is this really cool lion themed design. We've got the sunset going down in the background. There's a link in the description down below to the Procreate canvas because in there I've got a few reference images that you're going to need. And beside that there'll also be a link to any brushes and the palette that you're going to want for today's design. If you're new here I post Procreate content every single week so hit that subscribe button down below. And if you can't get enough Joel Create tutorials there's a link down below to my Patreon where you can get access to even more tutorials every single month. I'll throw up some of the recent ones on the screen now. So hit the link down below and show your support. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've downloaded the Procreate file that's in the description down below, you'll have these two images in here and the background color is already set to the correct one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use these images as guides to create our shapes for our design. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing in. So we've got two different lines. We've got one in the back, which we're gonna use as this main silhouette for this design. And then we've got one here in the bottom right, which we're gonna have as it is sort of perched up on some rocks. So first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is we need to create a brush that's going to allow us to do this. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to calligraphy and we're going to go to the monoline brush. And I want to create another version of the monoline brush that's got more of a smoother line to it. And I don't mean the streamline effect. If we swipe on the monoline brush and duplicate it, I'm going to tap on the monoline brush and then we're going to go to stabilization. Now this is a new feature for 5.2 and we've got all these different options down here but the one we're interested in here is stabilization. So you can see if I draw a line out it is still relatively smooth but if I increase the amount of stabilization here and we go up to say 40% is a round number the lines just become even smoother and we get even less jitters in there. And look at the very top there if I scale this up and down your line will change accordingly. Now I'm going to go for something around about 50%. Now when we hit done at the top, this brush here now is the extra monoline version we've got. Now this will just mean that when we outline our shapes here, so everything will be nice and silky smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and outline each one first. So let's turn off the top one and use the bottom one here as the main guide for our design. We're going to create a new layer above it and we're going to switch our color out and you can change it to any color you want. But if we go to our disc, I'm going to just use black at the bottom here. And the brush size doesn't really matter too much. Mine's about 7%. And we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna just simply start outlining. We're just gonna use this new brush, go all the way up into here. And we're gonna outline each item as we go. So you can start off maybe here around the mouth. And you'll notice I don't go around every single bit of fur because we're not particularly interested in that. We're just interested in a really smooth outline of our lion here. And it doesn't have to be pixel perfect to the image either. We're just creating a really nice lion-shaped silhouette that's going to be the foundation of our design. So I'm coming up here towards the nose and then I keep letting go and then I'll start inside the body and then just making my way all the way around our lion until we get up to the top of the head. Then we're going to use the fur here and you'll see an example of what I mean. We're just keeping everything nice and smooth here, rolling that round into there. And then we're going to go ahead and create another sort of wave round and then just go down the back of the line and then when we get down to this point here the image actually runs off so we can go ahead and just create a just sort of swooping line down into the bottom right hand corner and if you started in the same position and ended in the same as me you can drag and drop your color in and you'll end up with this cool outline of our line now if I actually turn off the image underneath, you can see I purposely sort of smoothed out some of those lines at the top. Now if you want to, you could zoom in here. You could maybe add some extra details or even just smooth out some gaps or create less gaps. It's totally up to you. But I want to go for something nice and simple. We just want the silhouette. So let's go ahead now and turn off that image for a second and let's work on the next line. So let's go to our layers, turn on that line here at the front. And again, let's create a new layer above it. And then zooming in, we're just gonna start down here. I'm gonna start in this gap here. Go around the paw, around the base of the paw. Now the bottom half of the design isn't really something you spend too much time on. We're gonna hide it within the landscape. And again, you can spend as little or as long as you like going around the sort of hair of the lion. It's totally up to you how much detail you wanna put in this. I'm gonna create a really nice smooth outline. And then when I get up towards the top area here, I might sort of create some sort of spikes in the hair. So I might go like this, for example, and then just create some little gaps in here just to break up the solid sort of shape. Spikes in here just to break up the shape a little bit so it's not 
so sort of rounded. So you can see there the differences I've done in that. And then we're just going all the way around. We're gonna go down the sort of back here. And then for the tail, we're gonna go and loop all the way around. Again, you can create some nice little flicks in here if you want to. Create a nice little point at the top. And with this, if you make any mistake like that or you're not particularly happy, it's all right. Just overlap it one more time, fill in the gap. So make sure you get a nice solid shape and then come around the round the back of the tail into the body, around the back of the leg. And then I've gone to the edge of the canvas there. I just need to go across and then up the other side of the leg, underbelly, the back of the other paw, which to me is in a slightly odd shape, but we'll go with it. And then we're gonna go up and around the bottom of this paw and then the underside of the line. And then you should then be able to then go ahead and drag and drop your color in. And make sure if you have any gaps, like the tail, it was quite a skinny piece. You just need to drag and drop your color into there as well and potentially fill in any gaps and then zooming out and then turning off the image underneath. You should end up with a pretty smooth looking outline of our line for the foreground. Now again, it's totally up to you. You can go back in if you wanted to. Let's change our brush. You could change it to say the script brush and you could, if you want to, go ahead and on the back here of the line, create some like little flicks. So reduce your brush size down. This is just for demonstration. I'm not gonna do it, but you could create some sort of flicks in here and create a nice sort of smooth mane or furry mane, whatever you wanna call it, but something like that. Just creating some more detail down the back of the line. And likewise, you could do it on the tail as well. So now we've got our two shapes, what we're gonna go ahead and do is start building in the rest of the design. So let's go ahead and move our images of our lines to the very bottom. We don't really need them for now, but we'll keep them just in case you wanna go back and make some adjustments. And then we've got our main lion head here. So we are gonna go ahead and go to our layers. Let's turn off the line that sits in the foreground for a minute and let's work on the big main shape. We're gonna go ahead and actually grab our cursor and the uniform option and I'm gonna scale it down and I wanna position it in the center until I hit those orange lines. Now turn on snapping if you don't see them and then tap on your cursor when you're done because that's gonna be the main area but I wanna put some foreground items down here. So let's go into that layer. Let's go to our colors for the first time and let's take a look at what we're gonna use. We're gonna go ahead and use this third color here. So these three are quite close in terms of tones, but we're gonna use the third color here. And then we're gonna drag and drop that into the lion's head. Then we're gonna go and use our layers and create a new one. We're gonna tap on that layer and we're gonna clipping mask it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in the floor. So we're gonna to go to our colors first of all. Let's just select any color. I'm gonna grab a gray for the minute. And then I'm gonna to go to my brush library. I'm gonna grab the monoline brush, the normal one. We don't necessarily need the one that we created earlier. And all we're gonna do is simply draw in a floor, which is where our sort of sunset's gonna sit behind. So just underneath sort of the mouth over here on the left-hand side of the line, I'm just gonna draw in a line straight across the screen. Hold your pen down to get a nice straight line. Pop your finger on the screen to get a nice horizontal line. And then from your end point, we're gonna go all the way around the outside. I'm drawing on the screen as we speak. And then just link up to your start point. That way you can drag and drop that color into that space. And now we've got our floor. Now that's been done on purpose so that we can now get a good guide for where our sunset's gonna sit. So the first thing we're gonna then do for the sunset is go ahead and create another new layer. Let's drag it underneath the floor now that sits between the lion's head and the floor that we just made. And then on this layer, we're gonna go ahead and change our color out to white. So we're gonna double tap in the top left-hand corner to select white. And with the monoline brush again, we're gonna go ahead and draw in a circle and hold your pen down to get a nice perfect circle and put your finger on the screen to make sure. And then we're gonna scale that up to something roughly around about this sort of size, really. Something about that is good. You can always scale it down if you want. Grab your white and drag and drop it in. And then grab your cursor. Let's get that orange line running down the middle of the canvas so we're nice and in the middle of the design. And then we're gonna move it down to the point where it starts to sort of create just a lesser section at the top. So we've got less at the top than we do at the bottom. So I'm just dragging that down. Something roughly like that is pretty good. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. And then behind our sun and our floor we've just created, let's create another new layer. 
And now we're gonna get started on the glow that sits in behind. Now we've got our shapes, we know sort of roughly where to color in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna start here in the palette. So what's that, the fifth color along? And then we're gonna make our way down all these nice colors into the yellows. So starting on the fifth color here, that is across the top row. We're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to airbrushing. We're gonna to go to the soft brush at the top. My brush size is set to about 20%, that's not bad. And we're gonna work in a circular motion, just creating a big glow in behind. So I'm just gonna, in a circular motion, just create a big glow up until the edges. Now I'm pressing very lightly as I get towards the outside of the design. And I'm gonna push that color across to the right hand side a little bit more. Until we leave like a slither of that color originally up in those top areas, but primarily red around this sort of centerpiece. And then let's switch out to the next color down. Now it's up to you if you wanna do every single color, you don't necessarily have to, but I can grab this one here, which is the sixth color. It's a bit of a brighter red and then blend that in. And then you kind of want to move your sort of cursor up until you get close to the edge of where that red was sitting. And just keep going around until you're happy with the glow. And then let's go through the oranges and yellows. So I'm going to grab this one here, the next one along to the right. I'm going to start in that circular motion right smack bang in the middle, build that color up towards the outside. And I'm going to grab my colors again. Now I'm going to skip a color. I might jump straight to this one here, the second to last one. And then just in a circular motion right around the edge of the sun, add in that really bright yellow. And now I'm going to skip one more color again to the bright yellow on the right hand side. And then very tight to the sun, just add in a bit more color. Now, if you want to get a nice smooth transition here, the simple thing to do is go up to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, and then swipe from left to right and that'll blend your colors nicely in together. And I'm only doing it about 15% just to get a smooth sort of gradient. You can do as much or as little as you like. Now we've got our background glow. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the sun now that sits in front. So on the sun layer, we're gonna swipe on it to the left and duplicate it. The top one, we're gonna change that to add on our layer option. So you tap on the N and change it to add. Then we're gonna go up to our adjustments. We're gonna go to Gaussian blur and we're gonna blur this one out and it will create a really sort of realistic looking sun. And I'm gonna go up to about 17% there, that looks pretty good. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. And then we wanna give it that sort of shimmer look in the distance. So we're gonna go up to our layers and the bottom one out the two. We're now gonna use this smudge tool at the top. I'm gonna to tap on the smudge tool again. We're gonna to go to painting and we're gonna use our dry brush here. And the brush size is set to about 10%. And then we're just gonna to wanna to smudge from left to right creating some really cool sort of smudges in the sun. Now, you could go left to right, left to right. I'm just gonna sort of push out from the side and just see what sort of shapes I get and then occasionally go backwards and forwards. Again, just to see what sort of shapes we get really. You don't wanna push it too far that it's very distant from the sun though. That's the only thing, if you push it very far, you'll end up with something sort of like that, which I'm not particularly a fan of, but it's totally up to you. If that's the look that you wanna go for, and I'm breaking up the top there. Now, if you're like me, and I end up creating too much rotation in my wrist, you can go up to your cursor and just rotate the sun the opposite way a little bit to counter your wrist action, and then that way you'll end up nice and straight upwards with your lines smudging nice and horizontally. So we've got our sun now nicely smudged out. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is start to paint in that nice sky in the background. So for this, we're gonna go to our layers I'm gonna go back down a layer until we're in front of the sun layer and create a new one. We're gonna go up to our brush library. We're gonna to go to painting. And we're gonna use the old brush in the middle. And then what we're gonna do is my brush size is set to, let's go for about 20%, that should be good. And let's change our color out. We're gonna use just a variation of all these colors. So we're gonna sort of build up on top of our layers as we go. But we're gonna use something like, let's use the bright yellow in the bottom right hand corner. And then again, you wanna kinda of go, make sure you're nice and horizontal for this. So I'm just gonna go from left to right, left to right, up and down the canvas a little bit. Just creating some cool lines in there. And then we're gonna switch it out to some of the other colors. So we're gonna switch it out then to sort of the darker red, maybe the fifth color across, and then overlap some of that color and come down on ourselves. And you don't have to necessarily go all the way up and down. You can just create some streaks inwards from the outside and push them in like so, and don't be afraid to just sort of use some darker colors towards the bottom if you want to. But every time you sort of smudge from left to right, you are doing exactly that, you're smudging in that sunset, which looks really cool. 
We're then gonna go and switch our color out then to say, let's grab the darker one, so the fourth color at the top. And then maybe just use this up towards the top area here, so creating some sort of darker streaks in the sky up here, which actually looks really effective because you create these really dark lines in here. And you can see I'm sort of testing the water a little bit, going backwards and forwards, just creating some cool lines and seeing what we come up with. But ultimately we wanna end up with a really cool streaky sky up there. And if you're not happy with any of your colors down the bottom, again, just go back to sort of your brighter colors. So maybe the third one in from the right and then just add in some more streaks just to smudge out those darker lines. Like I had a few dark lines in there and that's fine. You can then just build that color back up towards the top, making sure you wanna try and keep your lines nice and horizontal. There was a line there I made which didn't particularly go horizontal, it was sort of crooked. And don't be afraid to sort of push some brighter lines up towards the top as well. But you wanna just keep going backwards and forwards until you end up with a sky that you're happy with. So I'm just gonna introduce a bit more red in the center, so I'm gonna switch it out. And I'm probably gonna go for the fifth color in from the right, so this one here on the palette. And I just wanna add in some sort of red streaks towards the center. So really, you kinda of wanna follow that glow. You wanna go from the yellow to the orange to the red to the dark reds at the top. I'm just going to add in some of these streaks. Now these streaks are super punchy, so these will add in a lot of colour in that sky, which tends to look pretty cool. And that looks awesome, that's so bright, looks nice. And I'm going to just simply one more time go back over with the dark colour, so the third colour. I'm going to add some streaks in here just to break things up a little bit, especially towards the top and then maybe towards the edges as well. Just bringing in some darker lines in here just to break up our colours as we get closer to the top of the design. But something like that is pretty good. And again, you may have to go to your adjustments and rotate your lines just like I did previously, just to correct any sort of wrist movement. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go up to my layers. I'm gonna swipe on it to the left and duplicate it. And then the top one, I'm gonna change that to overlay. Now that will really punch out those colors. You'll get some really vivid colors in the sky there, but that will, in my opinion, boost the color and the contrast of the design and end up with a really nice looking night sky there, really bright. Now, what we also wanna do is just sort of cut off the sunset at the top a little bit. So we're gonna create a new layer again above that. And then we're gonna go up to our colors and we're gonna grab the dark color that we used in the background. So the third color along. And then with our brush, we're gonna switch it back to the airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're just gonna sort of add a darker tone sort of round here from the nose that sort of loops around to the same sort of side on the other side. So I'm just creating a sort of darker look towards that top edge and just sort of blending out a little bit that sunset just to again emphasize that it is actually a sunset and just fade that out towards the top so i came down a little bit on either side and just round the top there as well which in my opinion again just breaks off the sunset from the edge of the canvas so while we're still working on our sky area let's create another new layer and using the same color we're going to go to our brush library we're going to go to calligraphy we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to the script brush. And we're just gonna create some birds in the sky, somewhat over here on this top left-hand corner of sort of, of the sun. And my brush size, let's have a look at that. Let's go for about 3%. Let's create some small birds in here. So you wanna sort of, you can do it in a couple of ways. You can start off with a heavy point that flicks outwards and you sort of pressure and you end up with something like that. Or you could maybe increase the brush size a little bit bigger, create sort of like a dot in the middle and then flick your brush out either way from the body to create the wings. And then I'm gonna increase my brush size again, I'm at 5% this time. So you can create a body in the middle if you want and then create some wings off. And you wanna just sort of get that nice big taper effect towards the top. And I'm just gonna create, I'm gonna create roughly, create five, odd numbers tend to look pretty good. And then maybe another one down here. And let's flick that out on that side as well. And we end up with some birds in the sky there in the background. If you want to, you could grab your cursor, maybe rotate them, push them up into a different position maybe, but they're on a separate layer, so you can do that. Now, let's take a look at what we've created here. We wanna go ahead and emphasize that, but then also on the ground below. So now we've finished our background, let's change the floor color to the same color we're already using. Let's drag and drop that into that space. And then we're gonna go back to our layers and this glow here that we created for the sun, we're gonna swipe on it to the left and duplicate it. We're gonna go ahead and move that all the way up to the top we are then gonna grab our cursor and you'll see it sort of goes a bit weird because it's actually the top layer. We're gonna flip it vertically and then you wanna scale that down with the freeform option until it goes all the way down and sort of touches the edge of the ground below. Now, if you want to, you can make it slightly higher like that 
and then grab the bottom node and bring that down a little bit more. We're gonna fade this out anyway, but now you'll notice it's slightly higher than the ground that we created. We're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna select the shape of the ground, tap on it and use the option of select. Turn off color fill, that's very important. Turn off color fill and you'll see that the box that you created for the ground is still there. And then we're gonna use the option of invert, which will now select everything but the ground. And then when we go back to our layers, we should still have the zigzags. Go up to the sunset, tap on the sunset and use the option of clear. And then when we take a look at that layer now, it's sort of cut itself directly to the layer underneath. Then what we can do is go to our layers and lower the opacity down of this sunset layer till we end up with something nice and soft. Something around about 40% looks pretty good and you'll end up with a nice soft bit of orange on that sunset ground underneath. Let's work on this sort of mid ground here now while we're here. So let's go to our layers. Let's create a new layer above. We also want it to be clipped within the boundary of the line as well, so tap on it and clipping mask it. We're gonna go to our brush library and you should, in the description down below, have downloaded the free set of brushes, the African Shroud Brush set. And in here we've got some really cool stamps and we're gonna use some of the trees and some of the greenery down the bottom here. So I'm gonna use these two sort of trees up here for a minute. So I'm gonna use tree five and I'm gonna tap in the middle of the screen to position that. And then I'm gonna grab my cursor and scale that down until I'm happy with the position. Now use the uniform option so it stays as the shape it's intended to be. And I wanna scale mine and put it down here in this corner, something like that. So it's just in front of the sunset. That looks pretty good. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then for each item that we add, we need to add in a casted shadow. So we go to our layers. We swipe on that layer to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, we're gonna to go to our cursor. We're gonna flip it vertically and then drag it down until the base nicely lines up. Now the sun obviously casts light in an outer direction. So this shadow here needs to be pushed to the left hand side. So we just grab the distort option and we push that across using the middle node until we're happy with the angle that the sun is casting. So you might wanna be kind of drastic with it and push it right out there. And then what you can do is go up to your layers and lower the opacity down of it just a smidge so it changes from the actual tree itself. About 60% looks pretty good to me. You'll end up with that cool shadow there in the background. I wanna go ahead and add in another tree just in front of this. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab another new layer. I'm gonna tap on that layer and clipping mask it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my brush set for this collection. I'm gonna use tree three here. And I'm gonna tap in the middle of the screen. Doesn't matter what your size is for a minute because we're gonna grab our cursor with the uniform option selected, scale it down and position it where you want it. I wanna position it just in front or behind this tree even. I'm gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done. I'm gonna grab that layer and do the same effect. So we're gonna swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one, we're gonna lower the opacity down if you want. You can do it straight away to 60%. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically, drag it down until the base of the tree matches up. Take a look at your sun and the angle. It doesn't need to be as drastic as that because it's not so wide, it's kind of more head on. So we grab our distort and we just drag that node across and then move the base of the tree again until it all matches up nicely. And something like that is pretty good. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Now I wanna add in just one big tree here on the right hand side. So we're gonna do it one more time, but we're not gonna flip it. It'll be hidden behind some ground. So we're gonna to go to our brush library. I'm gonna use brush number four. I'm gonna to go to my layers. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that just above that layer that we were using, just so it's nice and organized. And I'm gonna tap in the middle of the screen until I get this tree. I'm gonna grab the cursor. I'm gonna flip it horizontally so it curves inward, so it faces the middle of the design. I'm gonna position that slightly off of frame until we get something like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe slightly further down even. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. So that's the mid ground nicely done now. We're gonna add in some sort of more foreground items, but still within the boundary of the lion. So the next step is to go ahead and change our color out. We wanna to go to a slightly darker color now. So we're looking now at the second one from the left hand side. We're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer just underneath the lion for a minute and tap on it and clipping mask it. We're actually then gonna go ahead and turn on the lion again and also clipping mask that. 
and we want to drag and drop this color into the line. Now the line itself might be too big to start with. We want to grab the cursor, we want to use the uniform option so it stays in its proportions and you want to sort of move it up until roughly it's like sort of this sort of height. So just sort of parallel really with the nose, you could maybe even scale it down a little bit more if you wanted to, something like that. Give it enough space so it's separated from the tree in behind, something like that looks cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw in some floor that it stood on. So I'm going to grab my monoline brush, I'm going to go up to my brush library, calligraphy, I'm going to use the monoline brush. And then we're going to go back to our layers and the empty layer that we created underneath the line, we're going to create some floor. So I want to create sort of something that comes up from here, like so, create some nice bumps in there. You can run straight through the feet of the line and then create sort of a big mound over here on the left hand side. And again, you want to go all the way from your end point and go all the way around and go all the way around to your start point, linking them up so you can drag and drop the color in like so. And then it will look like your lines stood on this really cool, and it will look like your line is stood on this bit of land in front. We can go ahead and use some of the other brushes that are in the collection. So we can go back up to our brush library. We can go back to the collection of brushes, so the African Shroud collection, and we can use some of these grasses. So we're gonna use Char Grass 3, and in certain areas, I'm just gonna sort of pepper some of these pieces of grass in here, creating some different sizes. So I started off kind of sort of 13, 14%. Now about 6% and just creating some grass. The thing is with this, if you don't make it nice and random, it will look like it's just a repeating brush. So you kind of want to just spread that out a little bit. Likewise here on the right hand side, you could do the same. So you know, increase your brush size up to say 12%, something like that, and just pepper away. And then reduce your brush size down to about five even, and then add in some in those gaps. And that would just sort of take away a little bit of the solid shape to that area. So now we've pretty much done everything inside the lion. I want to add those extra little elements that to me make this sort of design sort of stand out. So I'm going to go up to my layers. We're going to create a new one right at the very top. We're going to go ahead and make sure it's not clipping masked. So now everything we draw is going to stay outside the boundary of the line. And then again, using your monoline brush, so go back to your brush library, scroll down to calligraphy and the monoline brush. We're going to create two sets of rocks on either side here that are then gonna nicely frame everything together. So the first one I wanna create is on the left hand side. So I wanna create something that maybe starts down here, makes its way up and then sort of tails off towards the middle area here. And with this, you just wanna create some sort of like lumpy bumpy sort of shapes and then make them a little bit different to one another and then sort of bring that round towards the center here and then create a nice bumpy lumpy sort of shape till you link all the way around to your start point, making sure you tidy up your connection and then drag and drop your color in like so, and that will be one of the rocks that sort of sits in front. Now we actually just need to change the color of this for all of the foreground stuff, so it's slightly darker from this mid-ground area. So we're gonna go up to our colors, we're gonna grab the darkest color here in the top left of the palette and drag and drop it into the shape we just created. Now zooming in, you can just about see the contrast between the two, but it is a different color. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another new layer on the right for one more rock. Uh, I've done it on purpose so they're separated, so if you want to add some shading or anything, you can. But we're going to create one more rock, so I'm going to start sort of here. I'm going to create my sort of first rock, and create that big bump in here, something like that. And then I'm going to go all the way down just in behind this rock, and then create a sort of foreground in front of this rock, and then into the original start point, and then drag and drop my color in, like so. So you should end up with two rocks then on either side. And then from here, we can add in some cool little extra details. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and on the same layer I'm working on, it doesn't really matter too much. I can go ahead and draw in some extra little rocks in the ground here. So some smaller sort of pebble sort of shapes. So random little rocks on the ground. You can make some pretty small, you can make some fairly large if you want to. But this will also just help to create that sort of illusion that there's a bit of a floor in front of this whole design and we're creating some rocks in here just to illustrate that. So some rocks there. Maybe we'll go ahead and add a little collection of rocks down here too. And zoom in in. We can just add in some color in there. Maybe we actually wide over here create two rocks that are fairly close to each other and then we can add in some grass 
in between them. So a rock here, and then maybe a rock here too. And then drag and drop my color in if I don't want to color it in. That's a nice little space there that I can use. Maybe a slightly smaller rock there. And that should be enough just to give that illusion of what we're trying to achieve. So we've got some rocks in front. I'm gonna to go to my brush library. I'm gonna to go to script brush under calligraphy. So right at the bottom. My brush size, I'm gonna make it quite small, about 2%. I'm just gonna create some blades of grass from the middle here of this sort of rock. Flicking some left and some right. And then I'm also on the last one, just gonna increase the brush size to about 4%. And then in the middle, I'm just gonna use the bigger line to create some bigger blades of grass, fill in any gaps that I've left. And then over on the right hand side, we've got some really cool stamps left to use. So if we go back to our collection of African Shroud, in here we've got a couple more that we can use. So taking a look, we want to use this char grass too. And over here on the right hand side, we've got perfect space to use it. So I'm actually going to go up to my layers and create a new layer just in case I want to move this around. I'm going to tap in the middle of the screen. My brush size is set by the way to 33%, but I'm going to just move that up and to the right hand side a little bit more just to again break it away from the main design of the actual lion in the middle there. And then tap on my cursor when I'm done. And if you want to, you could go ahead and add in some blades of grass on here as well. So maybe just use the same layer to add in grass on all your different pieces. So I'm gonna to go to char grass one and then maybe add some in here. So reduce the brush size down to about 9% maybe and just add that in again reduce your brush size again just to create some smaller bl blades of grass in there something like that and then create some up here as well just tapping away creating some nice soft edges of these rocks now the only thing i would say is at this point my sort of grass over here on the right slightly too close to that right hand edge i could move all of these layers in the front if i want to and just move that across and see if that gives the effect i want still it actually still works nicely. Otherwise, I would potentially just move that piece of grass myself, but that nicely lines up there. And then if I pinch out with two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like down below, helps the channel out an awful lot. And if you're new here, I post Procreate content every single week on my YouTube channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you can't get enough Joel Create tutorials, there's a link in the description down below to my Patreon where you can get access to even more tutorials every single month as well as sneak peeks and extra benefits on my Discord server. And if you're thinking of getting your own paper-like screen cover as well as pen tips, there's a link in the description down below to both. It's an affiliate link, so I'll get a little kickback if you do purchase any, but it is the equipment that I use day in, day out. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.